what would you if you had to do something without <laughs> without without with Jess limiting, with the, other, the chances of getting caught? Jess is in the other room. She goes, uh uh. <laughs> Ooh, because what, we've had this discussion. What is it? What's the crime? No, I can't. I mean, like, like I've is that, you know, for a, a gay guy, a flamboyant gay 50 some odd year old man in federal prison, like how hard is it going to be for him? Zero. All right. Zero hard. Very <laughs> hard, raping? but, but not in a bad way. What? what about the rape? What about the rape, Stan? Oh, he's going to a low. All right, let's do this. Go mad. Go ahead. I know. Okay, so let me, because obviously, let me let me tell you, I've I've been watching the Christy. You know more about this one than I do. Chrisley. So, Damn it, Chrisley. Sorry, Chris, Chris Lee. Chrisley. His name is what? His name is uh, Todd. Name is, what, yeah. What's her name? Uh, Julie. So it's Todd and Julie Chrisley. And you're positive these were not any type of mortgage loans. These were all. No, personal. they they never say they're mortgage loans. They always talk about that they're. They're either personal, a combination of probably personal and business loans. Okay. It's so surprising so, that they got it. It's got to be for them. Maybe for that business they had. What was the business called? That was called? Uh, like, was it Seven Cs or something like yeah. that? And you have to understand that they're ha they, they would go to small. They specifically targeted small banks because they felt that they, had, they were less scrutinized through small banks and that they would want their business. Their business was more important to them. So they tried, they went specifically to small banks and the documents that they were providing, you know, you really can't verify the types of documents and, and they have perfect credit. They have a, a hit TV show, you know, and let's face it, the average loan is if you're getting a two or $3 million loan, that's not the average loan. So you're not being scrutinized like the average customer. You're getting well, preferential treatment. But when somebody comes and asks for money, like let's say you just needed a personal loan for like bills, you got to explain what the money is for. That's what I'm wondering what they said it was for. They couldn't oh, have been like, we need this to survive. They couldn't have said that. They no, had, no, they're, they're saying things. I'm sure they're saying things like they're investing it in real estate. They're renovating, doing renovations. They're you know, whatever they're, they're also consolidating loans. Like they, they were doing different things. Well, okay. let, let me, let me, let me explain, let me explain real quick. Okay. This is, so they had a hit TV show for several years and, um, they're one of the guy, one of his business partners and the guy that was doing his books was a guy named, uh, Mark Braddock. So yep. you got, uh, you know, you got Todd and Julie, they've got a bunch of kids from a few, from different marriages. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Like, like Todd is to me, he's flamboyantly gay. But there's multiple times where he's always gets upset when people think he's gay. He's like, why do people think? Oh, he's like, exactly what a gay person would do. He's like, I don't understand why people think I'm gay. You know <laughs> what? He's just super feminine. But so which was part of the whole the whole shtick, right? Like it's comical, you know? Right. Um, and so they had this show, um, you know, Chris Lee knows best. And. And he's got a business partner, which I don't think you ever really see. And they've got the gr the grandmother and the bunch of kids, and there's always some drama. And the 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 show is basically talks about how he's made all of his money in real estate. So he's made a bunch of money in real estate and through various real estate holdings and uh, rental properties, uh, rehabs, whatever. Well, there's and there's always a drama, and you know I'm sure it's, it's partially scripted. Obviously, like most of these TV shows, they come up with a a drama every every episode, right? And it's doing well, but he's also spending an, an, an insane amount of money. Now, you know, we're talking about like $350,000 a year just on clothes. You know, they they go on exotic vacations. They, they live in this ridiculous house. What was the amount that they stole? Okay, so it's $20 million in bank fraud. And it's supposed to be $10 million that they screwed the IRS out of, but later you find out that it's really not, it's really about five or $6 million. Is that uh, why they got sentenced to such a little amount of time? Well, but they didn't, they, they got, he got 12 years. Yeah. She got seven, right? Yeah. He got 12, he got 12 for 20 or $30 million. Cause I, they, they, I, they still I, haven't I, had the second trial to determine exactly how much loss there is. So this is similar to uh, what's her name? Uh, yes. So I was reading on this that, they were at one, the, the loss was so high at one point they were looking at life. 
So I'm just wondering how, where the adjustment was. Cause the, again, if I, if you saw what I was seeing right now, the, the fucking pacer, I, I'm on their pacer right now. Really? So, um, so I, I don't understand. So you're talking in pacer, they're talking about life. Like it, were they no, no. The charges? No, no. When I was looking at, uh, when they originally got charged, they talked about what they were facing with, cause if you look at their charges here, there was, okay. That's, that's, I saw, I know what you're talking about. I saw that. It's a lot. Yeah, there. I, I get it. There's over 12 counts of wire fraud, tax fraud, and and bank fraud, and they stack. If you stack the maximum, then they're saying we're looking at life. Like he did something where he was like, "Oh my God, we're looking at life. They're gonna put us away for life." Like that's what they want. Of course, he. They've never admitted they've done anything wrong. But let, let me go over it real quick. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm pulling up the uh, guideline calculator. So look, in 2012, he. So let me put it this way. So in 2010 or 11, he and this guy, Mark Braddock, they start having an affair for about a year, right? Todd Chrisley, who's not gay, is having an affair with Mark Braddock. Oh, the guy was? Yeah. Okay. So okay. He has this affair for about a year. Uh, then they kind of break it off, and but he remains the business partner, and they're, he's doing their, their, obviously doing their taxes. I don't know if he's a, a, just an accountant or if he's a CPA, but he's doing their, a lot of their paperwork for them. They remain friends for the next year. Well, in 2012, Mark Braddock is let go. Todd says, look, you're done. You never really find out what it is, what, what exactly the reason is. Also, their affair, by the way, was uncovered. And Braddock, sa Braddock says that he and Chrisley uh, actually, Chrisley, he and Chrisley actually paid somebody $38,000 to, to, to keep it quiet. Now, in 2012, he gets let go. Well, Mark Braddock is concerned that he's, in the time that he's been with, with uh, the Chrisleys, he's done a lot of fraud for them. Okay. So even though their TV show makes it seem like they make a ton of money, a good chunk of the money that they're making is, be, is by borrowing money heavily from small banks using false bank statements and false personal um, personal uh, assets and assets in general that they just don't have, and borrowing heavily from these small banks. Two million here, five million here, a million here, half a million there. And you know sometimes they're even using the money to pay off existing loan mortgage loans, right? Well, I read in there uh, in the criminal indictment that one of the loans he was going for, he was saying, yeah, I don't know. But, Two million or four million in the bank or whatever, and they he had to fudge the numbers because they said he he never has had more than seventeen thousand dollars in his bank at any given time, right? Which is nuts to me, right? Oh, I listen, just, and, and, and emails if you want them for reference. Um, and they're getting they're getting checks for two three hundred thousand dollars for their for their uh, for their show, like every quarter. I mean, they're, they're, they're pissing away money. And, and you have to think, too, sometimes you have a, a ton of real estate holdings and maybe not all the real estate's making money. And so you're you're subsidizing some of those payments with with personal uh, loans. The point is, is that Braddock is very becomes very concerned that he's committed a lot of fraud over the years. So he goes to the government and Braddock with, Braddock was the accountant. He's accountant slash, he says business partner. Right? So accountant, yes, accountant. I okay. think he was more of an accountant. Based on what Chris Lee was asking him to do. Gotcha. I think he was more of an accountant. So he goes to, he goes to the government. They say the government. Um, On his own? He goes to the government. Yeah, yeah. After like, he's like, okay, we're done. He's furious. So he goes, to, they say the government. Now the IRS is the, is, was running the investigation, but I also heard somebody else say FBI. So he either goes to the FBI or the, the IRS. Most places are just saying the government. So I don't really know. I, I do know that there was an, an IRS agent that testified several times during the trial. So let's say the IRS investigates the whole thing. He goes and he says, listen, I have, I have dirt on these guys. They've been committing fraud. I can give you all the documents, but you have to give me immunity. They say, no problem. Tell us what you got. And that's he, the Braddock. That's Braddock. Braddock okay. provides a bunch of documents, emails, um, texts. I wish we knew what type of loans they were asking for. It would just. 
I don't know. I mean, I, I know that nobody's ever said mortgages and I've read a bunch on this. I've watched a bunch of videos. I've read a couple of articles. They've never said mortgages. Okay. So they end up getting a, a bunch of documents from Braddock. Braddock, and, and these are documents, you know, they're damning. They're damning. Like you don't get this kind of, this guy is blatantly, you know, Todd Chrisley is blatantly telling this guy, forge this document, forge that document, fake this document. Like, like, the, and if you don't know how to do it, talk, I'll hire somebody. Yeah. I saw like, that. Talk to somebody and figure, figure it out. Like I, you know, I need to get this loan. And so anyway, the, the point is, is that it, you know, it, it's, it's bad. And this is what kills me about this guy. He really pushes the whole Christianity thing too. Right. Um, you know, he never takes responsibility. It's not like they ever said, look, you know, you, you're right. We're fucked up. Instead, what they said is, is that, and keep in mind, you've got different accounts, different emails, different phone numbers, different email accounts coming from Julie and Todd. Well, they say that Mark Braddock made up all of this, forged all the documents even though you know in court that the IRS is going to go back and make sure that it came from your email, your right. cell phone, it was your text. Well, they they they, they investigate it for seven years. They investigate, and the new C, the, they hire a CPA when his name is Peter um, Trentino. Yeah, I'm reading about him, right? As I'm talking to you, his name just came up. Wow. Yeah. This, so did you know they filed bankruptcy? Oh, yeah. That's the whole thing is that they borrow $20 million in loans and they then no, they borrow borrow bankruptcy. Like they can walk away from it. Million. Huh? $36 million. Yeah, but here's the thing. They've paid. Yeah, they will. See, I hear it is they paid, they paid old loans after Correct. Chris so they filed for bankruptcy and walked away from more than $20 million. Right. Of these, wow. Yeah. Yes. So the total loss is, is roughly 20 million. That's just the banks, not what they are, the IRS. They're assuming the IRS will be another five to 10 million. You know, they were saying 10 million, but typically it'll come out where maybe it's more like 5 million. So Peter, he was the, the guy they hired. Yes. And he's doing the same thing, by the way. He's also forging documents. Yeah. He got, what did he get? He was sentenced to three years. Three years. Okay, he got three. So he got three. She got three. No, he she got seven, and he got twelve. Right? There yes. Go. Okay. So here's what happens: is is they are eventually they're eventually indicted, and then there are superseding indictments. So they get indicted. She is called to. Uh, um, I think Julie is called to the grand jury and asked to provide documents. They then forge documents, and Julie provides those documents to the grand jury and to the government in order to make it look like she didn't do anything wrong. So now you're now, so she also got hit with, I think, obstruction of justice. I, I actually think they both did. They, they, they both got hit with obstruction of justice. So they eventually get indicted. They go to trial and they go to trial, bro. Like they went to trial. This is just kills. Do you know, me. do you know what plea deal was offered? If one was offered? So I watched a video with um, an attorney, these two, this father son attorney team. Right. And they said that based on what they were offered, it was better for them to go to trial. Just like we talked about uh, on the other video, mm -hmm. it was one of those rare occasions where it was like, okay, you're not really offering me a great deal. Right. Like it's like, if I go to trial and lose, I'm going to get basically probably close to the same deal. So they go ahead all, but here's what kills me too, is all three of these guys go to, go to trial. You're freezing a lot. Well, I mean, it's being recorded on my end. I don't, I don't see me freezing at all. Oh, you're recording right now. I've been recording. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were recording. Yeah. All right. I, I did I, my intro when you left. Oh, you did the intro when I left. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> I, I, forgot. I would, I would restart your computer because the, the lag, right. It just did it again. It just did like a, your face was beavery and then it jumped to where you are right now. Right. But you understand it's recording. It is recording on my end. It won't right. do that when Colby gets it. When Colby downloads it, it shouldn't do that. It it, it will, but I, I I'm just letting you know I, I do this like if you go look at the other video, you'll see you'll see the jumps. Okay. 
I mean, I'm listen. The, this is the, let me tell you that the good, the great thing about there, there are there are positives and negatives to being extremely arrogant and narcissistic, and one of them is that I, I think even even frozen and looking silly, I'm still gorgeous. You know, so and I got Jess over here agreeing. She's like, yeah, yeah, that's true. No, she's not. She tells me that's not what Jess is saying. <laughs> So she's like, yeah, mm -hmm, okay. I didn't yeah. know we were recording all this time. Yeah, that's why we're sitting here talking. <laughs> I, 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 I have a water, but I don't have it with me. All right, well, I'm going to grab my water. Keep us going, Matt. I wish you told me we were recording. I would have fixed my hair. You, Just kidding. You're frozen, I think. I'm not frozen. Anyway, um, they, they end up going to trial, right? In the trial... The guy, Mark um, Braddock, he gets on the, the stand. He talks about the affair. They deny it. He talks about, and, you know, one of the things that was mentioned was the, the defense attorney for the Chrisleys, they're like, listen, you're spiteful and you're, you're holding resentment against this guy. And, and he, he admits it. He's, they're like, you just want revenge for being fired. He's like, you're right. I do want revenge. But it doesn't mean that the documents are in, inaccurate or that Is I've that done it. that just did the 60 minutes? I'm sorry? Was he just interviewed by 60 Minutes? I have no, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think I saw that one. I think I just saw that. that what's his name? Um, his name is Mark Braddock. I think he was just on 60 Minutes and he was talking, they were asking him about that. And he was, he was very open about, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of ill will for these, for yeah. these two, but not, nothing what I said was false. Right. And, and not just that, you've got the, I've got the documents, you've, I've got the emails and the government is going to, authenticate those documents. So. Right. Um, you know, what's funny is like sometimes that the authentication can just be, there was an email, but they don't know what the, the, the body of the email said, but still sometimes they do. And I'm sure that he was keeping all of these, these records, regardless, the government certainly believed him. They certainly committed fraud because they were, here's the thing. They're, He's they're providing false documents to obtain loans. And then the second CPA, he's also providing false documents. So even if you said, hey, Braddock is lying, really? Because the next guy did the same thing. So you're telling me that both of your CPAs or your accountants are falsifying documents in order to get you loans. And the second guy is doing it out of the goodness of his heart. And you didn't, you didn't instruct him to do it either. Come on, man. Stop. Right. Right. And that's well, why people think because they've hired an accountant versus uh, a bookkeeper, that it's all going to fall on the, the accountants. Like if now if they, I'm sure if the accountant went out of his way and did this without the, uh, the borrower or the, the client knowing about it, that's different. But a situation like this, there's there's no there's no escape go. Everybody is going to tell, and I also imagine these guys once they decide to go down the path of like uh, fraudulent activities, if they were to get together and get a paddle and say, "All right, we're going to do this fraud. We can't talk about it. We can't send text messages. We've got to use codes so we can go meet." Even when people do all of that, even drug dealers, when they're like, ah, "I don't ever want to get caught on the phone or a text message," at some point. I'm going to do it once. And you send the message. And then yeah. I think you get so complacent. And at some point, if he probably hadn't filed bankruptcy and did his best to repay these loans, he may have, he may have gotten away with it. Oh yeah. They may not have got away with it for a long time. They investigated him for seven years. And I did check it is, it's all personal loans. This, these were at least what I read. It says it right here that they obtained, was it 30, was 30 something or 40 something million. It was uh, 36 million. Yeah, I got it right here. Let's see right here. It was so much to read 2014 where they walked away from 20 million. That was what they walked away from the amount uh, 36, 36 million in personal loans. And Look, I was a mortgage broker at one time, and I'm not going to say I never did anything to get a to get a loan done. I definitely didn't comprehend the consequence and the punishment because yeah. I was I justified it in a million ways. Oh, they can afford it. It's just it's not fair the way the system's set up. And 
whatever it was, really, I just wanted my commission. That's really the truth. I wanted, right. I wanted my commission and I was going to go scratch numbers, white out. Um, I was always fear though, that, that the lender would pull, I forgot what it was called, where they could pull your, uh, pull your actual tax return versus what? 4506. There you go. 4506 T. 88, 88, 21. One of those two documents. Yeah. The 4506 T I think is what it was. That was that we were always afraid because we had a pretty, you know, everybody's got their underwriters and whatnot. And we had this guy, Paul, that owned his own processing company. And he was adamant about, man, if I ever catch any of you loan officers submitting a uh, uh, falsified documents that that the client didn't give you directly. But we were we were encouraged to do what we had to do to get these loans done. Remember the pick a pays like and these guys with the and these loans were given to them in what year? Uh, distributions were 15 and 16. So file tax returns to pay any taxes for 13, 14, 15 or 16 years for the tax years of 2013, 14, 15 and 16. So they went all of these years. How were they getting loans and not paying taxes? Well, they're, they're probably just not they're not providing the taxes or they're providing false tax returns and they're not having them. They're not pulling it. Falsely claimed the company earned no money and made no distributions in 2015 and 16. That's what they're telling the IRS. Yeah. You're telling the bank one thing and the IRS something else. And that happens all the time. So hey, what, was, what was the guy's name that outed him? Um, Mark Braddock. Braddock. And he was given immunity, right? You were saying? Yeah. yeah so he was, he, out of the bunch, he's the smartest one. What <laughs> you were going down eventually. Well, what what prompted him to go do that? Had the investigation already started? And or was no. he just like, you know what? These people are such scumbags. I'm gonna burn the whole damn house down and save myself. Well, that, that's exactly what happened. What what happened was that they were he had been obviously helping them do this, and his whole thing was look, at some point it's gonna go down. And they're going to blame me. They're going to mention to, you know, I'm obviously going to get sucked into this. So my best course of action is to go preemptively and talk to the IRS, provide the documents and arrange a, a arrange a deal where I won't be prosecuted. And that was the best call for him. Right. So he obviously got an attorney who went in there and said, look, I got a client. Here's who these people are. Here's it's, this. Here's that. And it's real rare to get full blown immunity. For, for something like this. I mean, you'd have to know like where bodies are and, you know, really be putting yourself out there to get shit like that. But well, that, also you know, this is a big case. This is their TV people. I think that had a lot to do with it. This was going to be a spectacle. Right, right. We get to make Making names in the industry. As Kanye would say, I'm not going to repeat what Kanye would say, but he ain't completely wrong, Matt. So, so what happens? Just saying. So they go to trial. They go to trial, they lose spectacularly. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they didn't they didn't testify, obviously. It, it would have been great if if you know they had testified and Todd was up there going, uh-uh, no, you know, and but anyway, he didn't. So um, but Braddock did and uh, uh, the agent did, and multiple listen, multiple people testified against them. Um Anyway, they end up getting hit and they get so so Todd gets 12 years, Julie gets seven, uh, Peter Tarantino, he gets three years. But here's the thing what I wanted to mention is based on the sentencing guidelines, now they still have a second trial that has to be done to determine how much money they have to pay in restitution. Right. But Todd and Julie got hit with the same sentence. Okay. Todd. And Not the same sentence, I'm sorry, the, the same, they got hit with the same charges. Oh, gotcha. But Todd got significantly more than Julie. Right. So why, why is the question, right? Right. Well, I was going to mention, I wanted to mention is, you know, one, we've talked about this before. Well, first of all, I want to mention this is that you're, you know, what you do for a living is prison consulting. Right. Right. So you consult with people that are going to be sentenced you help with the PSI, you help them mitigate their, what their sentence will ultimately be. Right. But be clear though. I don't help with the PSI. I help with oh, preparing right. you for the interview of the pre-sentence right. interview. So the way a, a pre-sentence interview is, let's say I lose at trial or I take a plea a agreement before you're sentenced, the government arranges for you to be interviewed by a, a, a probation officer. Who's, who's 
third party non biased so he, he he has no no skin in the government's take or in the defendant's side supposedly. Right. supposedly so he goes in and he says look this person they they were they were charged with this and he says so so let's say t- take Todd for example Todd was charged with he has a um First, they, they, they place you in a category, like how many criminal history points do they give you? Has he ever been convicted of a crime? No. Then you would be category one. Right. Now, this is his first one. Right. Now, if you were two or three or four, you would get, you would, they would add different. Well, if the, cri- if the crime was bad enough, it could also enhance the criminal history. Right. But in his case, he's never been convicted of a crime. So he's right. got criminal category, history. Yeah. Category one. All day long. Second thing is, his his first his count is wire fraud so or bank fraud bank fraud with sorry the main one is bank fraud so with bank fraud it's a level seven so at a level seven you don't go to prison you know you get you get probation right but but nobody it's a level seven plus (laughs) <laughs> right, right. Because then they hit you with the enhancements and the enhancements yeah. are when they is what kills you. I think his, because, his, his first enhancement was like 18 points, I think. Right. Well, his yeah, his first enhancement was it was it was like 20. It was 20 levels mm-hmm. because it was between nine point five and twenty five million dollars. From what I read, he landed on a 40. I was trying to look it up, but my mouse just died or something. So I'm stuck on the screen. But I, I thought he landed on a 40 on his offense yeah. level. Right. Well, he I did. don't understand how he got such a short sentence, though. His original guidelines were life. Well, category one, he, well, a 40. No, he didn't end up on, he, he, his, he ends up with a 37. Level 37? Level 37. Look she at the guidelines. Up. Look at the guidelines on a level 37, man. That's, what is that's like 360 months. Really? Look it up. Go to, I, I can't, oh, actually, yes, I can. I, I got my iPad. Keep, keep talking. Sorry. So he ends up getting an enhancement, obviously, for the money. That's 20 levels. He ends up getting, for for lying in a bankruptcy, he gets another two. He gets another uh, another two level enhancement. He gets another two levels for sophisticated means. He gets another level for borrowing more than one million dollars from a financial institution. By the way, I've got almost every enhancement he got. So he also got an enhancement for. Um, what was the other enhancement? Um, I think something changed right before sentencing because if he had here, here it is right here. You said he was a 37. Yes. So if he would now, I don't know enough about this case to know that he was a 37, but assuming after all of the, the ups and downs, his adjusted base offense level after everything's said and done, if it landed at a level 37 with a category criminal history one, that's 210 to 262 months. That's, that's the, the uh, recommended guideline range. Now, I don't think he had a minimum mandatory because of this type of crime. So the judge, of course, could go below that. But to only get what he got, there must have been some significant arguing at sentencing or the pre-sentence report came back way different because just to be real clear, and maybe you'll add this in when you talked about the pre-sentence report, Matt, the whole point of the pre-sentence interview for anybody that's watching is once everything's said and done and you've gone, you've you pled guilty, you went to trial, you lost. Now the government submits their findings to uh, a probation, third party, right. and the defense submits their findings to probation. And then you go in for like a, a bullshit interview, which isn't a bullshit interview, but it turns out to be a bullshit interview because most people go in so ill prepared. It's 30 minutes to maybe an hour. They ask you a bunch of yes and no questions. It's mostly about finances, money, money you might have somewhere, properties, family, mental health, substance abuse. Most people aren't really prepared for any of these questions. So you're just kind of like, yes, no, yes, no. So now your entire life history came down to a 30 minute interview with you with a bunch of yes and no questions, some real light paperwork that was probably provided from your attorney. And we're talking like terabytes of information provided from the government as to why you're the world's worst criminal. So you'll see these pre-sentence interviews when it turns into the PSR, the pre-sentence report later on given to courts as a recommendation to what type of sentence the pre-sentence thinks you should receive. In a situation like this, it just doesn't make sense why they get such a short sentence unless the pre-sentence interview found that the government's numbers were way off or the, the, uh, the defendant's attorneys were able to come in and argue those numbers at sentencing. Uh, cause that's a really short sentence for that loss amount. 
I don't understand. You just said like, like when we talked about Elizabeth Holmes, I'm not saying that he got, he didn't get enough time. I'm just curious. I, like, I think that that's a fair sentence for him, what he received, but I'm just curious on how do they get to that? Like the government, what was the government asking for? They couldn't have been asking for that. They must've been asking for something more. I, I don't, I don't actually know. I, I, I don't know what the government was asking for. Um, so we'll, I'll do some more research on this by the time you're done editing all of this. And maybe when, when you send it to me, I'll, I'll add it in here. Cause there's gotta be, a, the guidelines cannot be, he couldn't have been an offense level of 37 unless he got some kind of a departure for something. Did he tell on somebody in the very end? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm I was, um, the, the story, the, the, I watched a video on with these two lawyers and they were, they were going over what like the pre-sentence report, you know, they were going over the PSI or I guess the government's response to the PSI. Like they were arguing back and forth. And, and the argument was that it wasn't sophisticated means that it should, the, the, you know, obviously they argued across the board on the dollar amount and all of these different things. And in the end, when they got in front of the judge, the judge said 12 years, 12 years for him, seven for her, three for um, Peter, you know, Tarantino. Well, if that, if he was at 37, and got that, that's he should insane. be, yeah, internally grateful because it's that's not a hefty sentence for for what he allegedly did. Well, here's the here's the second thing is that they filed a, a motion after the, they they filed um they're asking for a new trial based on the fact that the IRS agent got on the stand and told the jury that he had not that they had not paid their taxes mm. for certain for certain years. And they actually did pay the taxes. Then they said, well, it doesn't make sense. Like you're saying he still owes money or that, that, that Julie and Todd still owe money for this year, this year, and this year. And she was saying, yes, they did. They do owe, still owe money. They didn't pay those taxes. And of course their whole thing is no, we did like, like obviously they, they knew they were getting, they were going to get, go to trial. So they went right. and paid the back taxes. Well, it turned out that the IRS, they found out later that they did, that they did pay them, that there were fees that the IRS had said were still owed, but those were actually paid also. So they didn't owe anything on the back taxes. So now you're like, you just told had an what, IRS. What was the amount of back taxes? I'm not sure. It was what she's saying. Like I, she couldn't say that's, that was the other thing is like, you're saying that they still owe money for, you know, whatever, 2012, 14, and 15, let's say. And she's like, yes, how much? Well, I don't have the exact number, but I do know they still owe for those years. They did not pay. Well, did they pay anything towards it? Well, I do not know, but I know they still owe for those years. So the jury is hearing, like, not only did you defraud the banks, but you haven't even paid your taxes knowing you were going to trial. So turns out they did pay them. And so they're trying to get a retrial. And this was a, this was a three week trial. So my question would be without knowing anything other than what, what I'm hearing right now, because we don't know the amounts, let's say, let's say the amounts were wrong. Let's say they did pay back. I don't know, whatever, whatever amount they say they did pay. I'm assuming there's that there's still fraud being done. And the discrepancy might be, we didn't do everything you said we did. Our guidelines potentially should be lower, which means we're probably facing less time. If you were to have the correct numbers that could play into a role as to why the judge maybe did downward depart. If that's the case, if he did, because basically if they were at a 37, based on what the judge gave him, how many years, uh, 12, 12 and seven. So 12 and seven would be hundred and 30 something months to like 168, which would be a level 33. So maybe what the judge is thinking, if all of this does come back and they end up being right, maybe he dropped it enough guidelines that if the numbers that they're saying they were, he sentenced them within that area. So there's really nothing to come back and say, look, even if you're right, but even if we were to open this case back up based on the loss that you're admitting to, I sentenced you within those guidelines. So do you really want to come back and test your patience and see what I sentence you this time. Right. Um, the judge could be doing that to kind of prevent the, the, the possibility of him getting a, a, a retrial. I, I mean, I don't know, but that's a thought. Right. So, well, and, and keep in mind too, 
just because the PSI said one thing, they, you can get in front of the judge and start arguing. And suddenly the judge says, you know what? I agree. It's not sophisticated means. Yeah. You know what? I agree. I don't think they did meaning, meaning, mean to lie during the bankruptcy. You know what? Like they can start, the judge can start knocking off the enhancements. Oh, absolutely. It happens all the time. I mean, sometimes there's these weird, they're called C pleas, uh, C, C plea, C one plea, whatever it's called. And, that's you're, you're agreeing to not argue anything at sentencing. You're agreeing that well, I'm taking this. It's seven years, 10 years. There's judge has no ability to go down or up. Um, but most situations like this, you know, you can't, you can't argue what you were found guilty on, but if you're discrepancy with the numbers and that could have been a reason why they took it to trial and didn't take a plea deal. They're like, man, if you gave me a plea deal on the real stuff, we see it happen all the time. We, we have a client right now that, uh, he got caught. He was doing a bunch of stuff he shouldn't be doing overseas, smuggling stuff. Da, 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 da. So he's working for the government now, doing basically under undercover type stuff. But they're making him use his own money, and then they're they were reimbursing him. So the last the last one that he did is a big big drug deal. The last one that he did, he used his own money. It was like half a million dollars. Did it. Everything went the way it was supposed to go. The government didn't pay him back, so he did one more without them knowing about it to get his money back. And then they, they nailed him for that one. And when he went to sentencing, it was like, it was black and white that the government owed him a half a million dollars and nobody cared. The judge just didn't want to hear it. Sentence it's, it's, it's nuts to me. I mean, he did go do it again. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. usually you don't see them asking you to use your own money. That's kind of weird to me, but I mean, it was, it was as true as rain. Dan, if you, I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and listen to you say that the government's unfair. I I, I refuse to that the use. Are you I, if you're going to suggesting that the U.S. government this is, is, is unfair over. during sentencing? I, well, that's that's the thing, and that's why you have to have a good attorney. And whenever I hear my client, when my clients are telling me, "Man, the numbers are wrong," I'm like, "Look, your attorney can argue this at sentencing. The problem is, is most attorneys their preparation for that." And you have what's called your sentencing memorandum where attorneys are supposed to have the sentencing memo completed, you know, a couple of weeks before sentencing. And a lot of the, the discrepancies that you guys, because kind of going to sentencing, even when you take a plea deal, going to sentencing is like a mini trial because this is where yeah. your attorney gets to go and argue some of the, you know, numbers and things like that. And if they don't go in there prepared, I believe they don't want to, they're just telling you what you want to hear in the moment of you freaking out. But it's like, oh man, we, we took a swing at it, but you know, it is what it is. And that's why people don't understand what we do as consultants. We try to tell them that, look, there's no magic wand. There's no magic pill. But if you don't know what the situation is and you're just trusting somebody else that knows more than you, you just have to have having, having faith. This isn't where you should just rely. I'm not saying don't believe, but having just blind faith without any action behind it in a situation like this, and then you get a shitty sentence and you go look back. How many guys did you meet in prison that if they knew more about their situation, not that they would have had a better outcome, but how many times did they find something out that they could have done differently? And it's like, fuck, why didn't my attorney tell me this? And it's just, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't have an answer for that, but it's very common. Yeah. You, you have to be your own advocate. You have to be, you just can't kick back and you like, you, you have to be, take an active role in your defense. These dipshits here, these two that we're talking about, I like, and Elizabeth Holmes, I don't think she's a bad person. I think she got in over her head and still wanted to somehow fix it because for her, I think it was more important to be the, the female Bill Gates than it was to be the richest woman in the world. I, I don't think her initiative was money. I think it was power, clout, like, like she's hanging with the big league. Um, these guys, they just seem like bottom feeding swindlers that <laughs> every angle they get, they're just going to bleed, take money. And because they're on TV, they figure, you know, yeah, the guys are reality stars. They must have money. I'll give them a couple hundred thousand or a couple hundred million, whatever they were going after. But um, they, they, they were buying fancy shit with it. They didn't have any money to save. They only had seventeen thousand dollars in his bank account at any given time. And you know, I know there's people out there that wish they had seventeen thousand dollars in the bank account, but not everybody's given these types of loans and income. They also had great income on top of it. So yeah, yeah. they should have gotten more time, in my opinion. He should have at least. Now you were going to ask me earlier why is her sentence less than his? Or I don't know if you were going to ask me, you were, you were acknowledging that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know she got less enhancements. She wasn't act as active as he was. Oh, so the guidelines weren't the same. No, their guidelines were not the same. Ah, okay. Cause even in guy, even when you see situations like this where guidelines are the same, 
Like if Elizabeth Holmes was a guy, I think the sentence would have been much heavier. And I think if uh, she was this, what, what's her name again? Um, uh, Julie. Julie. Uh, we see it all the time. Women typically get lesser than men for the same type of things most of the time. He's been known to cure insecurity just with his laugh. His organ donation card lists his charisma. His smile is so contagious. Vaccines have been created for it. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. Okay, so listen. So this guy goes in one time. He he goes in. So I, I met this guy in Col at Coleman. And um, it's actually it's funny because they called him. Uh, his name was a, a Thomas. What so, year was this? Oh, this was 2000. I met Thomas when I first got to Coleman in the medium. And it was 2000. Uh, 2000. Uh, two, uh, so it was 2004. Not not Nicholas Thomas. Uh, no, no. His, his his first name was uh, was Thomas. I don't know what his. So, um, because it's funny. It, well, anyway, he, they called him Tom, and his roommate was Tommy, but or was it Thomas and Tom? Anyway, whatever. So doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So anyway, Tom and his wife both went to sentencing. They had both signed for a plea of fifteen years apiece. Okay, now. Thomas's wife went in first. Tom and his wife had both been to to state state uh, court before, and they'd gone both been to state prisons before, before even meeting each other. And in, in the state, typically, you agree to get sentenced to you agree you sign a plea deal for fifteen years, you get fifteen years like that. It almost never deviates from that, right? It's, it's like because, a, it's because the state typically gives you very fair guidelines, right? Right. So if you say five years, the judge doesn't say I'm giving you forty, right? It, like it, it could, it, that can happen in federal. A lot of times the, the, but this was state, not feds, right? Right. But a lot of times in the federal courts, they deviate from what, what you signed for. Because your plea, it says it right in there. There's no guarantee you were, but this is not a promise or right. anything. You know, this is just, we're, we're promising to recommend the guidelines, yes. but it's up to the judge. It says yeah. it in the plea agreement and you're, and it also says you're not allowed to argue this if you're not happy with it most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Tom, uh, so Thomas goes in there. His wife goes in first. She gets 15. She get. I mean, I'm sorry. Her, she's supposed to get 15 years. She ends up with five. Right. They both were told they were going to get 15 years. Yes. On their plea agreements. She Correct. gets sentenced first. She goes in and the gives judge five years. gives her five years. So he walks in, he's in, he, he walks in and his, like his mom's in the court and says how much time she get his, his mom's like uh, she got five years he's like oh that's great he's thinking that's, he's gonna get five years he's gonna get five he's thinking what she gave yeah great <laughs> so he goes up he sits down the judge starts yelling at him and let you know that they go and they say yeah your honor we recommend 15 years blah 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 well he goes they say do you want to say anything he says no i'm i'm good i'm i'm good i know what i signed for i'm good so the judge starts talking about how he introduced his wife to 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 smoking meth. And he said, when he said it, he said, he remembered thinking, well, that's not true. Like, that's not what happened. Like she basically, the judge starts lecturing about how he led this poor woman, you know, down the path of, the, of, of cooking meth and selling meth and how he ruined her life. And it's probably not that off from what she submitted. Oh no. It's exactly what she said. Yeah. Because his believe. mother later says she got up in front of the judge and your wife cried and said how she had gone to jail before and, and was off meth and met you. And you introduced her back to meth and convinced her to do this, convinced her to do that. And she was scared and she loved you and she didn't know what to do. And and it, it, it made you sound like a fucking horrible person. And then the judge said, I, I'm going to take pity on you. I'm going to give you five years. Wow. So he doesn't know any of this. Thomas just sits there and listens to the judge talk go on and on and lecture him. And finally the judge says, just based on what your wife says and based on, you know, the, knowing the, about the case and your history, I'm going to give you 300 months. And but so it didn't, it didn't, Oh, he did say 300 months. He said 300 months. Right. What now, sounds worse to you at 300 months or 25 years? Well, 25 years sounds worse. Does it? 300 months sounds horrible to me. 
Does it? Oh, because I've always looked at everything through a car loan is 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 typically five years. A mortgage is typically fifteen or thirty. This and to hear, guy, to hear that, it's like yeah, but this sounds, is the guy who's making meth in his bathtub and is single wide. Yeah, I he's get not it. that sharp. So he he thinks I'm getting 15 years. So when the judge says 300 months, he just sits there. His lawyer looks at him immediately like he goes, he said, my lawyer looked at me immediately and said, you OK? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I knew what I was getting. I'm good. Do you think the attorney knew at that point? That oh, I know, that, you know that the attorney knew that he you didn't know. comprehend it. Yes. Do you think the attorney but, should have been like, you know, that's that's 25 years or 30 years? Of course years. he should have. But the attorney's thinking. I'm a public what, defender. What, what difference would it have made if he did say that? The judge, and, it's not going to change the judge's mind. Well, and he and you're going to be in 30 seconds. The U.S. Marshal is going to walk you out that door, and I never have to fucking talk to you again. Yeah. So I don't want to have this conversation. I can at least dodge you for a real long time. Exactly. <laughs> so Thomas sits there, and, and, and so Thomas gets stands up. They handcuff him. His mom's screaming and crying in the back. They walk him out the fucking door. They walk him back to the U.S. Marshal's. Hold or back to the U.S. Marshal's holding cell. He walks in, and when you when you go to sentencing from the U.S. Marshal's holdover, they bring you to a cell, and so you know the guys that you come with all know you're all here to be sentenced, right? And that you're all they, they call, hey Matt Cox, you're being sentenced. You get up and you walk out, and everybody's standing there. They know you're going. So when you come back, the first thing they say is, "What'd you get?" So he said, as soon as I walked in, he goes, you know how it is, bro. I walked in. They said, what'd you get? And I said, you know, yeah, um, I got 15 years. I got, I got three, 300 months, 15 years. And he said, they all kind of looked at him and went, you got how much? He has 15 years. 15. He, they go, you said 300 months. He goes, yeah, 300 months. He goes, I mean, that's what I signed for, 15. And they go, no, no, bro, 15 or 300 months is not 15 years. See, I know because of what I've seen. No, if I would have heard him say that, I think I would have said to the other guys, I'm like, let, 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 him, say anything. Let, let this digest when he's ready to digest it. Right now, he's about to chew because there's nothing he can do. And you're stuck in the fucking Marshall's holding cell where you're with people that are like almost making fun of you. They're probably oh, yeah. kind of snickering a little bit. Oh, listen, it, you know, and like guys are brutal. Prison's brutal. It, guys are brutal to each other in general. What did this guy do again? What was his crime? He made meth. He was a meth cook. He was a meth. Okay. I can't, you know, meth, heroin, certain, there's certain things you don't have a whole lot of like, you're kind of creating bombs and potentially, you know, killing lots of people. That's why I was so lucky with my sentence because my contribution to putting drugs back out in the fucking world in the streets and kids and parents and all this stuff, it really was like, I don't know how I didn't see it that way at the time, but seeing it now. And also what you just said about how she kind of filleted him at sentencing. Right. Um, Shelly got sentenced before me and the, we took plea deals, but when the prosecution got up and they were like, Miss Morford, you know, we know Mr. Wise, cause there was emails back and forth and me trying to get Shelly to come work there and she didn't want to, and this and that, and, da, da, da. and she, she shut it down. She said, you're right. I didn't want to come work here, but we didn't know that what was ultimately going to happen. Yes. We admitted our guilt for what we did, but I'm not going to sit up here and say that it's his fault that I'm here. You know, I did what I did because I love him and I wanted to go with him, but it's not, I chose me. I don't think if she had said that, I think the judge would have hit me way fucking harder. Well, I, I think the judge, if you're truly honest, you know, I wasn't I mean? honest. Well, you may not have been, but I think when you're truly honest in front of the judge and you just say, look, I, here's what I did. Here's what ha is so much better than getting up there and trying to bullshit them. It, our next video we do together. Here's what it should be on sentencing mitigation and what most people do wrong at sentencing, talking about narratives and reference letters. Cause even this chick, what's her name? Elizabeth Holmes. I read a lot of her letters and this one that you just sent me, I just pulled it up and paste her and I was going through some of the headlines of the letters. It's the same. It's I'm not going to say Elizabeth Holmes would have got a better sentence, but all of her letters were, I guess she was a rape survivor. Did you know That's that what she said that was the first right. time anybody ever heard heard right. it was. And you start using these things and children and, and what a good person you are and how you've you've been such a stellar citizen in this world and you've brought change and none of it's focusing on the damaging consequences you did. Granted, she went to trial, so it's not like she could get up there and say she did it because she's going to try to appeal it. 
but almost everybody we deal with takes a plea deal. And when you start reading their letters of what they're submitting to the judge, and when you say be honest, it's not about honesty or, or integrity or lying. It's if you're really going to be honest, it's got to be so honest that I didn't think I was going to go to prison for what I did, but I started turning blind eyes. I started taking seemingly unimportant. I started making seemingly unimportant decisions that I didn't think were going to impact my life because it became so normal that ultimately in the end, committing crime didn't feel like it was illegal anymore. I was just going through life, living in the gray and they get caught they get roped up. And then all of a sudden their kids have cancer. Their mother is old. Their dog is right, stuck right. somewhere. It's like, now I, now I miss my children. Now I'm sorry. Right. And really all they're doing is they're looking for the, the attorneys only care about your acceptance of responsibility, your potential 5k one, your potential plea agreement. They just don't want you to fuck that up and everything else they don't care about, but all the mitigating that, that these individuals could be doing. And it's such a lesson with these very, very wealthy people that paid top notch for these attorneys. We're talking like more money than most people will ever see. They've spent just in these legal fees. They still came in here sounding like everybody else, even with a team of attorneys. That would be a fun video because we can pull up all these. We can pull up 10 cases and read what was submitted and why they probably submitted it that way and what they yeah. thought was going to happen versus that's what the judge sees a million he times. Every day. He, that didn't mean anything to him. So yeah. talking about what people should do, giving some, this is why consultants hate me because I'll tell people what they should put in their letters. It's the same thing they just said, but not using their kids as an excuse. Yeah. If I really cared about my family, your honor. I never would have put myself in this situation because I took myself away from my daughter and my unborn baby, like a complete moron. She should have said that. Yeah. The judge probably would have, uh, we thought Shelly was pregnant at um, sentencing. Man, the judge fucking lost it said exactly what you said. You got in trouble in 2011 and here you are in 2014 and you're pregnant knowing potentially you could, you could go to prison. What the fuck were you thinking? Like yeah. I told her, I said, don't tell him, don't tell him. I didn't want her to tell him because I felt like it would be looked at like that. Yeah. That's a, that, that's, a, that, that's to me, that's that, that just makes you even more of a selfish person. Yeah. Trying so, to use that as an excuse. So listen, so Thomas back, back to that. Thomas is still in the, he's it, so that, Thomas in the room with the U.S. Marsh in the U.S. Marshals cell years, Thomas. finds out he's got 25 years. 25 years. He's got 25 years that the judge had given the 10 years he took off his wife's sentence. He gave to him, and so he didn't even know that when his he when they told him that he runs up and starts banging on the door. He said, "Oh, I went up and I was like, boom, grabbing the thing. Hey, I need to talk to my lawyer. I need to talk to my lawyer." So he later found out when his mom came to see him, like later that day, his his mom said, oh, she buried you. She blamed everything on you. She was crying. And this he sentence the same day, same, look, within like an hour of her. Oh, wow. Back to back. Wow. So anyway, um, yeah, so I, I always thought that was I that story always. I mean, it's horrible because he was such a nice guy, but it was it was just so hilarious. And then, of course, she got out. And he always said she was going to, he was like, well, we, you know, they communicated. He, um, uh, he always said she was going to get out and she was going to work with like the DEA. To That's get what he him. said? Oh yeah. To, to get, she had okay. said, I'm going to get out and I'm going to get you out. I'm going to do a third party rule 35, work with the U S with work with the DA. And basically she lived in a trailer that was owned by his mother. And within six months of being there, she had never come to see him. She was seeing some other guy. His mother was was gonna if it was a asking him if he she could evict evict her from the trailer. And he finally one day he said, "Yeah, you know what? Just evict her. Just get rid of her." Like he had been bank for for years. He had been thinking when she gets out, she's gonna work with the DEA. She's gonna do a full third party rule thirty five. You know, and look, there may have been a, a moment. And it's so easy to pass judgment on what goes through people's minds. And right now there's a lot of people going that snitch, that uh -huh. snitching bitch. Can't believe she did that. I will tell you, man, almost everybody that you have in your immediate life that you think is your ride or die, your rock, whatever, mother, father, boyfriend, girlfriend, doesn't matter. Uh, unless it's a dog or a cat. I, I I'm almost convinced if the circumstances are right, they will tell. And I, I, I don't blame them. At the same yeah. time, it's like, unless you're in a situation where like the mafia is going to come kill your entire family for snitching or telling, 
other situations, many like, I don't want to talk about Jessica, but she never had the ability to, to yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people out there that I didn't tell nobody. There was nobody for you to tell. Her. Right. There yeah, wasn't, it, you were like the bottom of the food chain. Nobody you like, they weren't after you. You were just, you're a casualty of war. They were, you were free bonus points. Right. It's, it's like big, big hurt. You robbed the bank with, with two other guys. Those two guys, you all three of you got caught. Those two guys told immediately, and you're running around for the next 10 years calling them them snitches. Yeah. But the truth is, oh, I didn't snitch. You didn't have a chance, didn't to, have a chance snitch. to snitch. You even know, this I, guy, look, even this guy, Peter um, Tarantino, right? Like their, their CPA, it, he, he probably turned around and talked to the government and said, what if I cooperate? Can I get immunity? Can I get a two-year deal? Can I? And their, their whole thing was probably to him. No. Why would we have Mark? Uh, um, we have Mark. Uh, uh, right. Br Mark Br and his Br wife. Br Braddock. We have Mark Braddock. We already have Mark Braddock and we have all the evidence. We don't have to give you a deal to cooperate and testify. Yeah. And when you see these cases so often, you'll see cases where like the, the, the head person gets lesser of a sentence and the person getting more of a sentence, like the, the secretary or whatever, they don't understand. It's like when the government came to you and said, do you have anything you want to tell us? And you were like, nope. I'm not, I'm not talking. Whoever talks first is going to end up with, with a decent sentence. Even, okay. even in my case with the, the, the pill mill stuff, the, the main, main guy over the whole thing, the guy that was over Sean, his company got probation because well, okay. Listen, months and months ahead, he knew that there was an investigation and he started working with them and he's Mr. Hey, it must feel so he's, he's like that guy in his mind. But the especially, reality is he's the first one to tell, especially if those other people go to trial. Right. right. Like like the head guy can get a lot off if the guy's underneath him. One, he testifies against them. Well, he the, the, the head guy, him. Lou, insulated himself real good. He insulated himself through Sean. Right. Uh, and Sean looked up to him like 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 he was a god. You might still look up to him like that. I, I'm sure Lou took care of Sean in the end because Sean could have filleted Lou. I couldn't. I didn't have anything on on Lou. And everyone will sit here and say, oh, Dan, you got a 5K one. But I will tell you this. I really didn't know what a 5k one was when it was offered because it, I didn't have to do anything for it. If you yeah. look at the, uh, in my case is public record. If you look at it, everybody on my case got a 5k one and I was the last person on my case to accept the plea deal. Uh, so my fa my 5k one just was part of taking a plea. It, 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 I didn't have to go and, and tell where the bodies were or anything. It was just, my story was what really happened. But I couldn't point my finger at say this person did this because I didn't know exactly. All I could say was, I mean, yeah, it felt it felt shady. We had people coming in from Kentucky and Ohio to come see a doctor in Georgia, which just that never made sense to me. Why couldn't they go see a doctor in their own hometown? Right. Why'd you keep working there? I was like, because it was fun. I, I, I didn't I wasn't thinking about it. But at the end of the day, almost everybody will take a 5K1 in my belief. And I, you see it every day. Yeah, I, I've, named, I've known guys that that got sentence reductions or, you know, they, they got, they got, you know, cool, they got substantial assistance just by saying, here's what I did in relation to the, um, in relation to the, uh, uh, you know, the conspiracy, like, do you know this person? No. Do you know this one? No. Do you know this one? I mean, I know Joe and he did this and he would give me the pills, you know, so you've cooperated against one person who's already cooperated against you. Like it, for instance, in, um, in Doug Dodd's case, I wrote a, a book on him. In Dodd's case, almost every, everybody across the board got, got sentence reductions because they all just said, look, this is what I did. Like they all kind of agreed, let's all just cooperate. You know, and they people, all. How many people have you seen that took, uh, that went to trial or wouldn't take a plea deal? Now, they might take a plea deal with just acceptance of responsibility. I'm not telling on nobody, but I'll, I'll tell on myself and they get whatever, two, three points down. How many people have you seen that have had the ability? to bring other people down without the fear of losing your life and still didn't do it out of, out of honor. I have seen a few. I mean, the few guys that I've seen that have done that, you know, it's their word. Like when you really look into what they could have said and they could have done, it would, it's like, okay, you could have said this, but that would have been you saying, Hey, Five years ago, I did a home invasion with right. with Joe uh, uh, Joe Smith. Right. But Joe Smith already knows you've been arrested. 
Right. Joe Smith's not going to take your call. Joe Smith, there's no way for you to set Joe Smith up. And they're not going to indict Joe Smith based, based on, on simply you saying, saying that. Right. So Agreed. you say, oh, I, I could have taken down so-and-so and so-and-so. Really? How? You're locked up. He knows you're locked up. You and I both know he's not going to uh, he's not going to have that conversation with you over the phone. He's not going to admit to all this. And even then, there's very, uh, very little likelihood they're going to uh, go out and, and, and arrest him or indict him and arrest him. But just to save face, they like to say, well, yeah. I didn't tell on nobody. You really didn't have an opportunity. I've got I've got a client right now who uh, it, it would be him. He could, he could he could definitely could get a 5K and serve way less time if he would. It's his son and his wife. Well, it's your son and your wife, his wife. Right. Yeah, but I see people all the, all the time turn on their son and wives and brothers and sisters. But this this guy, he's 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 very he's almost kind of like the most calm individual, and he's looking at about twenty years without the plea deal. Um, he's just he's just eh, I'm not gonna got to take care of the family, and he's just so nonchalant about it. It was like I, I respect it, but I was like, if you're if you're not going to take a plea deal, we really got to re reevaluate how we're going to go about your case because it kind of changes my whole what I do. Helping you, know, you take accountability for what you did is hard when you're not going to tell them about what you're not going to take accountability for what you did. And he is though he's he's owned up. He's just not saying their parts. I think they're still, I think they're still going to get in trouble just because usually man with crime, the paper trails, the there's just, so, it's so easy to get caught. It's so hard to commit a perfect crime these days. Mm. What do you think? What's the perfect crime? What would you, if you had to do something without, <laughs> without, without <laughs> Jess with, is with in the, other, the chances of getting caught. Jess is in the other room. She goes, uh, uh, <laughs> Woo! because what, we've had this discussion what is it what's the crime no i can't i mean like like i've the problem you know like there are right now everything is so automated that that there there's there are a couple of different there's a couple of different things right now in real estate where you simply you don't have to show up you don't have to, you can do every, like you literally can do everything over the computer and with a couple of phone calls and walk away with a few million dollars. If you tell nobody. If you tell nobody and nothing goes wrong because it's always the problem of this. It's like, how you know how the FBI got on to me? It's not that I fucked up. Didn't you, weren't, wasn't it some chick? No, well, yes, but it, the way the, this is when, when it first started is that a girl, a woman that I was working with went to a closing with a driver's license that had her picture on it. Mm -hmm. She signed the paperwork. She gave her ID over. They're supposed to give her the check. The woman, the title closer looked at the driver's license and said, this isn't you. And she said, yeah, that's me. She goes, it doesn't look like you. Was she it goes, that's her? me. It, I just, it was her. It was her. Okay. She had different hair. Her hair was black in the pay in the thing. And it was a blonde, more blonde. She had thrown blonde highlights in it and stuff, but it was her. And the picture wasn't old. It was a month old. It's a month old picture. Because this woman mistakenly thought she, you don't look like this picture. I'm going to make some phone calls. She made some phone calls and, and quickly figured out that the house, we had transferred the deed from the original owner into her, into this fictitious person's name, contact the original owner. Original owner said, what are you talking about? That's my tenant. I don't, she didn't own the house. What right. do you mean? She just refinanced it. Whole thing fell apart. So because of a, it's, it's the fly in the ointment. I could not account for this woman making a mistake. He was part of your scam. Yeah, she was part of my scam. Okay. So how was I supposed to know that this woman was going to make a mistake right. and stumble on? Like that's my only fear of committing fraud at this. Because that's time. how it's for most people. That's that. It's something like that. It's something stupid. You can't yeah. account for that. It's I the guy who just. It's the guy who's driving a car, and actually stops at the stop sign, and then drives on, and a cop pulls him over. Why? You didn't stop at the stop sign. I did stop at the stop sign. No, no, you didn't. And now you seem nervous. Pop the trunk. Yeah. Ah! yeah. Just like that, man. <laughs> Just like that. 
And people think I'm not going to get caught because I'm a smart criminal. And there is no such thing. I think you're better off just saying, I'm going to get caught. I'm okay with getting caught because I'm calculating what the worst case scenario is. And as long as you found a way to do it right and come home to, you know, something that's worth it, you know, if I don't I have that way. I'd be better off. You're right. If I, the whole time had thought I'm going to get caught, prepare for it. I would have walked out with a couple million dollars. Did you really not think you were ever going to get caught? Bro, you have no idea. You don't understand the amount of arrogance that I that I have been saddled with. Wow. I can tell you right now, I was 100% positive I would never be caught. Never get caught. That's how arrogant I was. And you only see, you look at me now and you think I'm arrogant. This is a oh. fraction of myself. This is this is a mere shadow. of. I don't, the <laughs> I don't think you're arrogant. I used to think that you were were uh, putting on a front or pretending to be like like the cool guy, Matt Cox. I, but you really kind of you are you're actually pretty. You're, you're a good dude. You made you did. You're one of the better people I've met through this journey of prison consultants, whatever prison related. You're one of the better people that I've met because you've oh. always stayed fast. I I appreciate that. I've I've still once again I got Jess in the background going mm hmm. Mm -hmm. She knows I'm right or she wouldn't be there. I know. I exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, every once in a while, I'll say something that I don't even think about. And she'll look at me and she'll just smile. And I go, what? She'll go. No, that's those are the kinds of things that you say. Oh, I posted our video that we did. The one that you and I did with Hunter Moore. You sent it to me and I reposted it. Oh, OK. I don't know if you, if you watched. But when you start talking about the T-Rex, I put a little surprise in there for you on that section. You hear? I see she's laughing. So, so listen, go watch it. Go watch it, Jess. It's towards the end when Matt starts talking about fucking T Rexes and little arms and gym stuff. My so my question to you is the so the, the let's go back to the the uh, Chrisleys. So one, you know, obviously they're still now they're trying to figure out at, <laughs> the loss. You know, you know, huh? They're trying to figure out what the loss. Well, yeah, they're trying to figure out the loss, but but other than that. And they know basically what it's going to be around 20 million and change right. plus the IRS. They're saying like, they're saying probably 30 million, 25 right. to 30 million. But uh, what I'm, what I'm wondering about is this. Um, what is it going to be like for you? Have you, have you seen Todd Chrisley? Yeah. I mean, from what I saw online and stuff. Yeah. What do you so mean? What's it going to be like? He's going to the feds, right? He's going to the feds. He's going to, he's going to end up at, Oh, he's going to a low. She's going to a medium. Why is he going to a low? Has he been designated? I he just got sentenced. Like no wait, somebody. Um, I I'm sorry. I just saw. I when was he sentenced? We, not long ago. Wasn't oh. it like within the last week? No, no, weeks ago. Weeks ago. Oh, maybe a month or so ago. I I think a month or so ago. Let's. Yeah, was it or was it just weeks? A oh, week or so ago. I think it was pretty recent. I'm gonna look him up real quick. Uh, BOP. Some, so anyway, I forget who it was exactly that said it, but somebody had mentioned that she was going to a medium. And he's going to a camp or to a low, to a low or a camp. I think she's going to a medium. Do they got priors? I don't know. And she, and he's going to a camp. I think she got hit. She, she lied to the grand jury and she got, I think they both got hit with obstruction though. So they were sentenced on what, I guess only a couple days ago, right? Yeah. Uh, Cause he's not even in, uh, I just looked him up. He's not even in the BOP system yet. So there's really? no way he's already been designated. Um, I mean, if he's got a lot of priors and stuff and his, his, the sentence there's no way his priors were that much because his sentence he had any court. priors yeah it's I, I doubt he's going to go to a uh i mean he could go to a low which he might be even better off people are afraid of lows they they like i got a client right now he's going to a low it's because of medical reasons and he's freaking out and i told him i said don't don't use all this medical stuff thinking it's going to get you a better outcome people think their medical is going to get them to like not go to prison and all it does is it sends you to a medical facility, which is usually a low security for men. And it's it's much worse than a, than a regular prison because there's nothing to do. You're in there with like crazy sick people. Um, but his situation, unless he's got some like some real risk factors, um, if they think he's a flight risk, maybe the obstruction, maybe they feel like he's not camp eligible because he's going to. Uh, but he flee. also got 12 years. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Anything over 10. Yep. For guys goes sends you to a low. 10 so minus you? 10 minus your good time. So he's got uh, what a year or so. And uh, he should be able to, to transfer to a camp that that's what it is. I forgot he had 12 years. Right. 
120, so, wow. 120 months minus your good time. If that still is over 10 um, or whatever your months are minus good time, if that's still over 120, you'll go to a low security until you, uh, until you trip that wire of, of 10 years. And then you got to be there at least, I think, 12 to 18 months before they'll consider transferring you, which is pretty much everywhere you go. Right. But why would she go to a medium? I don't know where you're getting that from. I don't. I don't know. I, not designated I, for somebody to say that. I don't know how they're coming up with that calculation. Unless uh, were you watching a prison consultant talk about this? I, I was watching these. Uh, I think I watched. Uh, it was another attorney. Uh, some attorney who was. Is it that lady you sent me? No, it wasn't her. It was another attorney. Uh, adult children, ten-year-old Graham. Oh, that this is all the reasons that they're trying to tell them that they're not. They shouldn't go. Um, sentence was do, 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 do. Oh, all the, all the reasons why she shouldn't go to prison. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, we need to do a video on that because that's, what's beneficial to people is to understand that nobody cares about your fucking sob stories. Oh, and not just that, the, you have to think too. imagine the U S attorney ended up getting in front of the, got in front of the judge and showed all the videos of them talking about buying this and all the, how they just pissed away all this money. Julie, right. That's her name. Yes. So you can imagine you've got, you're standing there, you're on film talking about blowing all this money, buying these expensive cars. And it's like, oh my God. So you were ripping off the bank so that you could blow a bunch of money on. Yeah. So anyway, somebody had said he was going to a low, she was going to a medium. And I didn't understand why she would be like the low I get, he's doing 12 years, but why would she be going to a medium? I was wondering if you knew. I'm, I'm looking now to see where you would have gotten that from because yeah it I, make I sense to me at this point but chris lee keep us going man keep talking you can um me. you can carry without me can't you for a second yeah i can um i can't find it anyway so i was going to say like what do you think this like, camp environment camp environment what does it mean anything um not for her i mean for for her yes not for him though yes reality tv stars todd and julie crisley will serve majority of prison sentences in camp environment expert says so a, another thing that came up and i know the answer to this i'm just wondering you is that they're allowed they're being allowed to self-surrender right. so obviously and you, you get know, a three, you get a three-point reduction on your custody level for self-surrendering right so so obviously, I remember I was talking to Jess about that, and she was like, "Ah, oh, why? Why do they get That's to self surrender?" Cool. Oh, Jess, right? Yeah, why do they get to self surrender? And of course, you know, they're not as bad as a criminal as Jess was, right? Duh. <laughs> but the, the other thing, the other thing is, is like they can't, like, even if they wanted to run, they couldn't run. Why? They're too well known. They're, they're oh. they they would be caught so quickly. I don't know who the fuck they were. Oh, it, and, and it would be everywhere. It's not like some low level guy who nobody's ever going to hear from or ever hurt has hurt. He could take off and not show up. They're just going to put out a, a warrant for his arrest and he'll get picked up in three years. These it's people, crazy. It's the, the, the crime for going on the run is not that serious. No, it's not. Um, uh, neither is escape. Right. Like escaping from a from like a camp or something. Right. It's almost nothing. When you and the, the day is supposed the day they're supposed to whatever their self surrender date is, if they don't go in that day, it's only absconding until they think they've passed thirty six hours or or three or four days. Then it becomes an issue. I've seen people chicken out and not turn themselves in, and then turn themselves in a couple of days later, and there's zero penalty. They still went to a camp. <laughs> Listen, I, I knew guys that had walked away from the camp. Yeah, yeah, somebody got kind of it. And then, no, no, then got picked up like 18 months later and they got, they basically gave him a shot, took away game time. I got a guy you should, uh, that's my daughter calling me for my birthday. Aww. She just remembered at 4.50. Hold on, let's answer this. Hi, Caitlin. Hello. So you call me to say happy birthday at five o'clock? Yes. Well, you're... <laughs> You're 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 live with me on YouTube, so thank you very much. Oh, hey. All right. Well, I love you. I gotta go. Say hi, Matt. Oh, okay. Cool. Hi, Matt. <laughs> hey. All right. I'll call you back when I leave here, babe. Love you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Love you. I have work soon. So okay. Call me like, Bye. Call me late. She's a tattoo <laughs> artist. She's 22, so I'm just happy she called me. 
She's a t- tattoo artist. That's yeah. Really cool. Yeah, she's she's living on her own in New York City, making five ten grand a month tattooing. So wow. God, God bless her. Um, um, yeah. So where were we with these people? These uh, escaping and stuff. You know. So so what 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 I'm just gonna say. What do you think it's gonna be like for Todd? In in so here here's one of the things that that I you know people were talking about is that you know for a a gay guy a flamboyant gay 50 some odd year old man in federal prison like how hard is it going to be for him zero all right zero hard very really hard raping? but, but what not in a bad way rape? what, what about the rape what about the rape stan i was going to a low I feel like you're fucking with me right now. I am because I'm oh, saying I'm like, wait a minute, we're at a low. I can no. see I can see people, you know, oh my god, he's gonna get raped. He's, he's going gonna get to- he's gonna get what's coming to him. Yeah, he's wait, he's wait till Bubba gets a hold of him. No, nope. he's gonna he's gonna go to a low, he's gonna meet up with some like-minded individuals, he's gonna be walking the track, he's yep. gonna get a boyfriend, yep. he's gonna be holding the hands and swapping spit with some guy within he, he, he might months. not because he hasn't openly admitted it to this point, right? No, but once he's in prison, yeah. But you got to admit he's only? probably got a publicist still. Yeah, and yeah. a publicist yeah. probably like, look. Everyone's gonna try to get info from you because uh, I had uh, a, a famous individual go in, and one of the big things that when I spoke to his publicist and his attorney, they were very, 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 very. Just they couldn't have said it more clear. Anything you guys discuss or email, if it's going to be anything about what his life is like in prison, you have to do it through an attorney privileged phone call. Because if anybody records this or gets wind of this, people start every, look, everybody that's in there is talking to a reporter because, oh, I mean, what's going on with this guy? Let's talk about it. Um, so, this guy, if he were to go out and do something like that, if he were to be that dumb and get his rocks off, uh, it's going to get exposed and then he's going to come out. And it's okay. Maybe he's okay with that. But if he doesn't want people to know, I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna uh, do anything in there. I'm not short of a sentence. Seven. I mean, wait, twelve years. Just kidding. <laughs> no, he might. He, who knows, man? Maybe he's not gay, Matt. Maybe you're just assuming because everybody's not as macho as you. Only are. because his ex lover said he was gay. Oh, that's right. He had maybe he wasn't gay. Maybe it was only a year of experimentation. He had an affair with the man you said, right? The guy. The the, the, uh, Mark- the one that got immunity. Yeah, Mark Breddick said they had a year-long homosexual relationship. And he's openly gay, or he's just goes both ways too. I, you know, I didn't, I haven't spoken with Mark. But yeah, but he's I, not going to have any problems with with getting raped or assaulted. Um, if there is any gay activity in there with him, it's going to be all volunteer. Uh, he's going to walk the yard just fine. He'll be there a little bit, and his his he'll be under ten years, and he'll get transferred over to a camp very quickly. Very yeah. quickly. Um, if he was smart, he's got information in his pre-sentence report that can align him with like RDAP and things like that. 12 years could turn into five, six years very easily. Or I'm sorry, less. It could turn into half that probably. Yeah. Four or five years. He could be out. You know, it's so funny. Well, like when I got sentenced, like that wasn't, my lawyer was like, you're going to do 23 years. Don't she's like, people are going to that 85%. That was 85%, 87%. Okay. Oh, because yeah, good time used to calculate different. Right. And, and she was like, people are going to tell you they're bringing back parole. She goes, they're not. People are going to tell you like, she like crushed any hope. She's like, my, your only hope is a sentence reduction for a third part for, for, for a rule 35. Like that's your only hope. But Matt's like, what's my sentence reduction for putting a badge on? <laughs> like, listen, what? <laughs> don't laugh fucking gangster um over here um so yeah listen kid me i'm ready to go let's do this but again that's what makes this it's like i can't rely on anybody else that's i figured that out everybody wants to talk about tattletales and snitches and blah 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 but the only difference between you and probably 99.9 percent of everybody else aside from your height is (laughs) (laughs) What <laughs> guys are mean. Everything that you have done to get your sentence reduced is the same thing everybody else does or would do. They just won't admit it. That's yeah. the only difference. Admitting out of 5K1, I, I still to this day, 
I, there's somebody did it. If you Google RDAP Dan, there's some fucking guy out there that did this full on like report about me. Uh, it, it's like the audit police or something. Cause I said something bad about him in a video and he, he created the whole website with like my information on there and five K one da 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 da. And then people commented like, yeah, this isn't fucking new news, idiot. He talks about it in his videos. Do, do Why you, you should take a 5K1. You know how much of a kick I get when people badmouth me? Like I, I, I used to be thin skinned. Like I laugh about it and laugh and ju- it, it just, it tickles me to death. Tickles me to death when people talk shit. Well, because the only people that, that the, the, the Jessica's and, and there's a guy I want you to interview. His name is Brian Bruton. Okay. Brian Bruton was in a Florida state prison for manslaughter. He made a relationship with a female guard, convinced the guard they were in love. She was bringing him computers. She was bringing him uh, guards clothes. He escaped with another inmate. They got away. They ended up getting caught after they escaped, but it was like this whole fucking thing. And it's, it's really like, wow, if you Google it and he's a great storyteller, um, but he'd be great for your channel. Oh, I got it. Right. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got to interview him. He might, he might be out there in somewhere. He's either California or Tampa. He talks about both, but uh, I'll, I'll give him your, I'll give you his number and vice versa. Brian Bruton, he's got a channel. Does he? What kind of, how many subscribers? He was doing really well. Then he kind of disappeared. He's got like 15, 15,000, 20,000 subscribers. If you Google Brian Bruton bounce back, mm. he changed the name of his channel recently to something else, but uh, he does all kinds of stuff, but he's got, he's got some good prison stories. He's, he's a good He's like Jessica Kent, but in my opinion, a little more like authentic. Right. I have nothing against Jessica Kent, by the way. I don't think she's not authentic. <laughs> I, 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 I just, you know, you you sound like you're 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 scared of her. The, her my feeling, no, you know what it is 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 I would love to do videos with her because I think her stories. It, she's got an amazing story of overcoming drugs and things like like that lifestyle not everybody gets out of that lifestyle and she did yes um and and when she originally started doing her content talking and stuff i was doing videos with with brian and she would send me messages and because she had a real small channel and dan can we do some interviews together and I, I we were supposed to do a bunch of stuff and then uh she did that one interview with that lady and blew up and it was all of a sudden like well let me check with my secretary it just got, it got a little ridiculous. He's got 20,000, a little over, almost 21, almost 21,000 subscribers, 96 videos. Yeah. And if you look at his, his, his video release dates, you'll see like until recently, there's been none released and the no, ones no, that are being released. He did. He, no, he's six days, 12 yeah, days. No, no, no. Now I'm saying recently he's got some released, but if you oh. look, you if you keep looking there, you'll see there was like a year with no videos. Oh, okay. Really? Sheesh. You know, sometimes it gets overwhelming. And if you don't see like a huge, if you don't see a, sometimes you get frustrated. Guy's a badger, badger or something. You ever seen that dude? No. OG badger prison dude. He disappeared off the internet. It couldn't take the hate mail anymore. Really? Yeah. A lot of people, man, because they, they, they it's, it, it's almost like these weird clicks out there. There's some weird prison channels out there, Matt, that are like, it's eat mine's yours is distinct. I feel like mine is distinct, but then you'll see some of these other ones like 23 and one there. It's almost like prison channel gangland. It's like yeah. fake gangsters on a keyboard, but they're all like shedding hate on each other. And it's, but none of them, it's just like virtual battles on keyboards. Yeah. 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 I'm not, I don't know. I mean, I, I get a bunch of it, it in a very real way. I think part of the reason like maybe my channel hasn't blown up the way I, I feel like it should is because I have been so honest about like cooperating. Like, cause I have such a different, if I were to sit here and just talk about prison fights and you know, that kind of stuff. Well, first of all, it wouldn't be authentic. It, I feel like it wouldn't be authentic. I believe all those prison guys that have the prison channels that talks about all that stuff. I'm not going to say none of it's fake, but I, no one's got that much action going on in, no. in, in prison, unless you're like, you know, in uh, a supermax somewhere. Aside from that, you have to be making some of that stuff up. And at least with your stuff, your, your growth will continue because it's, it's based on uh, ground floor and foundations. You're, you're, you're building your business the right way. You're not doing it with a bunch of initial, like, how do you maintain something that's not completely authentic? I don't know. Right, how you right. Eventually you're going to crash and burn and disappear. Yeah, it, you you can't. It, it's kind of like these guys are like, you know, you should keep telling your 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 stories. It's like, yeah, but my stories will run out. Like, 
I need to interview other people. Right. I, I need to continue to do what I'm doing because ultimately my channel will become more just interviewing other guys because my stories, although I have a bunch of stuff, I probably have another year's worth of me telling my stories, maybe even more. Um, of just all the different, but those, a lot of those are just like how I interviewed this guy in prison and wrote his story and what that transpired. Cause those are kind of stories that I'm interwoven in and those can drag out, but eventually that will yeah. taper off and it ends up being, you end up being Joe Rogan in a way you're just interviewing people. Yeah. Which is where we all want to be. Oh, and everybody wants to tell us, you, me, what we should do. Oh, yeah. you should do this. You should do that. I'm not going to say they're wrong. But I can't do everything. I have to pick a direction and go with it. I'm already doing Art at Dan, Federal Prison Time. And then I've got Wise Media Group where we've got the studio and renting out the studio space and doing some stuff with that. If I were to spread myself any thinner than this and try to jump on every good idea somebody has, I don't think anything would ever get done. Well, that's what I was trying to do with the um, – I was trying to do the um, Inside the Darkness, right? But you know how hard it is to do put up a, a, a new video every single week? Oh, you're not doing that anymore? I no, mean, I, I'm doing week? it when they come in, as people come in, but they have to come in in person. If you don't come in in person, I can't put you on the stool and put to do the whole thing. I can't do it. So, you know, so now it's like basically if I get somebody that comes into the studio, I, I do both the interviews and then I put it up. But I just I can't maintain that a different one every single week. You, I just can't because you also don't want it to be forced. You don't want I've had people because those of you that don't know, I, I also started another channel uh, after I saw Matt. So I was just I started it because it was such a, an empowering experience going to Matt's studio and telling my story on his other channel. Um, maybe Matt will send a link to that. I'm not, this wasn't my most yeah. proud moment. I wasn't in my, it was so dear. I wasn't, I was caught off guard. Matt didn't tell me that I was going to be sitting in a room talking to myself. So I was not prepared for that part of it. But once I agreed to do it and I sat there, oh my God, it was the most therapeutic thing that I've experienced. And I've told my story a million times. So I was like, man, I got it. I want to do this. So I created part of my studio doing the same thing. We called it perfectly broken, but I've had people come in and sit there on, on the stool and they start telling their story and I'm listening to them and I'm I can tell that they're holding back and I'll hear them talking about, Oh, I was, I was adopted. I'm like, talk about that. Well, I don't want to, I'm not ready to talk about that yet. And it's like, then you're not ready to do this yet because right. that's the whole point of this is to be extremely vulnerable to give others the ability to hear that you went through something, overcame it and your life isn't destroyed. So other people can see that they're not alone. Um, so yeah, it's, you, you don't want to do it with everybody because not everybody's ready to, to share. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it, 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 it does. And, and I've had a couple of guys who have gone, they've gone up there, they've sat down, I've, I've given the instructions, walked out, closed the door, and they've come down in 10 minutes. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not no, listen, I bring them back up, sit them down, talk to them again, have them start over again, have them do it again. And they come down in 15 minutes. And it's like, okay, you know what, we're done. Like, you, you don't really want to do this. And, you know, I've had guys that come down in 10 minutes. They're like, yeah, I'm just not interested in doing it, bro. I just, and it's like, yeah, you're right. You're not. And did you let them leave or did you like, you get back up there and no, I want I, you to re-record. So one guy tried to go back up and kind of force it. And it, it was definitely forced. He didn't want to do it. And then I had another guy where he came down and, and I could tell after interviewing him, he was not going to open up. No matter what, just wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going to do it. And, and I was like, I can't, I can't force you to do it. Like I'm, I, I, it doesn't, that's the great thing about getting those guys in that room. And they start, especially after you've interviewed them, they kind of have a, a good feel for their story. And then the things that they've forgotten about or that they didn't want to say while looking me in the face, they'll say when they're by themselves. And that's the better interview. When they'll say things, right. Because you're not in the room. Right, because they, they, they're not worried about looking you in the face and, and saying that they were scared or that they... I've had people go both ways on that where without without me being in the room, they they just like, they weren't talking, they, they stopped. They almost just, you would hear them going, oh man, I forgot about this. I don't know what to say. This is really hard. They'll like yell that into the room. So I got to go sit there and, 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 but it's not, it's not as good. I've had a couple people do it without me being in the room and man, it was just... Once they I've already interviewed. They lost themselves, sure, there's a lot of rambling, but you can fix that in editing. But man, this it just became so much more like uh, personal and and intense. Yeah, 
I, I was just going to say, but keep in mind, in mind, I typically have interviewed them already. So they kind of know what the story is by the time they're done with my interview. Yeah, I started changing it to do the same because I thought it would be better to do the other way around. Let them tell their story first. And then I do the interview with them where we talk about what they talked about. But when they do their interview with me first, like the sit down, like what we're doing right now, it is easier for them to get in there and talk. Happy yeah. birthday to me. <laughs> Um, so, all right. So Todd and Julie Chrisley. Yeah. They, they, they got a light sentence for what they did. Yeah. Um, we got to look up and see like what the actual guidelines were once they got sentenced. Cause if they were what 37, I mean, man, this guy should be jumping for joy. Um, but again, how much time are they really going to serve? Are, is compassion, are they going to be begging for compassionate release? You know, um, they're all, they're, they're going to go to camps low security prisons. There's not going to be any violence. There's not going to be any threats on their life. Uh, the most dangerous part of every, the, the hardest part about everything they've gone through so far is what they're going through right now. Prison experience is going to be overwhelmingly positive if they choose to be positive with it. Hopefully they prepared the right way and they've got solid pre-sentence reports where things like RDAP and additional halfway house time and uh, they should both be qualifying for First Step Act, um, earn time credits, you know that you're familiar with that, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I am now. What well, that wasn't a thing when I was. No, that's there. part of the First Step Act. Yeah, and you can only earn those uh, f 15 days for every 30 days of programming. You can only earn that once you get to 18 months or less on your sentence. You no longer get those credits. So people that are getting like 18, 24 month sentences, they get nothing for First Step Act. So you know, I've talked to guys that the BOP is trying to not give them their earned credits. If they turn down RDAP. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. My buddy Pete. Um, you have your buddy had, Pete call me. We'll fix it real quick. Yeah. They, they, they told him you, you turned down RDAP. And he said, well, I turned down RDAP because I went for the interview and I said, I have 10 years left. Right. And they said, yeah, yeah, you're right. And so they, he goes, but because they can't say that they recommended you don't take it now, it's either you accept it or you denied it. So they said he denied it. And then when they calculated his whole thing, they said, well, the problem is you denied RDAP. So we're not giving you credits. So he's trying to fix it right now because they're now going back and saying, no, no, we told him not to, but we can't put that in the system. I would have that guy reach out to me because it's either something you're not being told. There's something he's not understanding or there's a whole nother thing at play because RDAP is a volunteer program. They cannot, there is no consequence other than not getting, because in RDAP, you can double dip. You get your sentence reduction, your six, nine, or 12 months off of your sentence, in addition to your uh, First Step Act credits. So you could get more time for that. But what he's telling you, almost all the time it's user error. There's something that he's reading wrong or not understanding, because they, 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 that's, not, that's not a case. That doesn't happen. And if he's being told that, we could fix that almost immediately. Well, I will. I will mention it. Um, he's listen. He's a pretty sharp guy. He's he's on it right now. Really, what, what they were telling him was this: they said, just go apply for RDAP, and when they accept you, it'll all kick in, and you'll walk. You'll be sent to a halfway house. How much time did he have? Oh, he he has a, a thirty four year sentence, but be, with the earn time credit, or uh, he's he's he gets all, like almost two years knocked off his sentence. And he's got 10 years left right now? No, he's got less than 10 years. He's got like five years, but with the two, no, not five years. I'm sorry. He's got like three years, but with the two year, he almost immediately goes into a halfway house. So what are you talking about? So he denied RDAP 10 years ago or seven years ago. Well, like, yeah, like, so yeah, like uh, seven years ago. Okay. And, and the, anybody that would want to take RDAP at that 10 years? Yeah. With 10 years, they're not thinking because every I get why you want to take it. You want to just get that year out of the way and get it done. But once you get relief, because after you finish RDAP, you still got you know several years left and you go back into a regular unit, you can violate your RDAP with something else happening a year and a half, two years later. You could get in a fight and that's going to take away your RDAP and the whole year is gone. That's why you typically don't want to take it until the tail end of your sentence. So you can finish RDAP and go home. So, which was his argument. Right. He should, is he a friend of yours? Yeah. I'll give him the Matt Cox discount. All right. <laughs> Paying double, yeah. fool. Hold up. No, I, I asked him that. He didn't he doesn't know. Oh, Jess, you, maybe if you paid attention. Um he said, Jess, if you paid attention. 
Oh yeah, she she went upstairs. Um, that's yeah, the guy that's got twelve years, right? Huh? She, you're talking right. about the dude that's got he's twelve not, years. Right? He got twelve he's, years. You got to so have under ten. It's over ten years, so he's going to a low. Very, but he'll be out right away. He'll go to a camp, probably be there six months, and you know the good time. And he's probably going to wish that he was still at the low when they sent him to the camp. Yeah, she's saying I don't understand because we heard the same thing of what. That, that she was going to a, a medium and she was like, why would she go to a medium? Who? Uh, Jess? Jess was asking, because we, where did we hear that? On one of the things we were listening to, one of the, one of the, the problem is, is, is all of these reporters and stuff, they read something and they're like, they're going to go to a low and they think a low is a camp or they're going to be at a medium security prison where at, and they think that's a camp. You know, the, these well, you know, Jess, said, know. Huh? You know, Jess, Jess said, first of all, she said, you could send her to a, a, a women's camp. She can handle it. She goes, he couldn't handle a, a man's, a men's medium. He could not. And I tell you right now, I was in the medium for three years. Listen, he ain't going to do well. No. At the medium. He's going to be some, but he's going to need a war daddy at the medium. He's got money. He can probably afford a war daddy. And look, if Jared from Subway can afford a war daddy, I'm sure this guy can. I mean, what? Oh, so he, she goes, if it, yeah, if the word Addy costs $17,000 or less, guy's never had more than 17 grand in his bank account. Man, you can get a word Addy for two mackerels a week. <laughs> listen, he can get, listen, he can get a word Addy. He don't need to pay nothing. With I'll all that. I'll cut your hair and listen, take care of you for two mackerels a week. With all that money you're sitting on, no reason for you to go without. Baby. Baby. Hey, thank you so much for letting me hang out with you a little bit, Matt. Anybody, if you get a chance, check out my channel too, Ardap Dan, Federal Prison Time Consulting. If you're facing a potential prison sentence or you're indicted or you're under investigation and you're not sure what you should be doing, uh, Matt will drop a link. There's a free consultation. And the worst case scenario, we can at least leave you with some information that you can use without paying a dime. So thanks, Ardap Dan. Bro, that should be your, that should be, that's the commercial. I got some. I just want the website to be done so you can send people to the right place. But uh, I, I got some stuff for you. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching the video. I hope you liked the interview uh, about the the Chrisleys and their sentence. Uh, I thought we were gonna figure out why a, a couple of things. We didn't. It's fine. Um, I appreciate it. Either way, if you like the video, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Also, leave me a comment. I try and respond to almost all the comments. I read, I probably read 95% of the comments, to be honest. And uh, I respond to as many as really deserve to be responded to. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, by all means, you can contact me. Uh, my email is in the description box. Also, all of my books are available uh, on Amazon. There also, there's uh, links in the description box. What else? Oh, I have a Patreon, as I'm sure you saw during the video. I have a Patreon. Uh, you can, you know, like 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 100, 125, whatever. 10 bucks works. Like, I'm not, I'm not greedy. Also, uh, do me a favor. If you like the video, hit the thank, you can hit the thank you button. Uh, if you go to where the thumbs up and the share, that, that kind of that, that line there, you can scroll over and there's something called thank you. And I believe it's a dollar sign or something. Anyway, you can thank me and you can donate a dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine, four ninety nine, fifty dollars, whatever. There's different variations or amounts that you can donate. So I appreciate you guys watching this. Uh, thanks a lot, and I will 